In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Coming, sweetie. Shh, shh. Mommy's here, Noah. <laughs> Neil? <laughs> that you? Did you see anything when you opened the door? Anybody on the street? A car? No, nothing at all. At first I thought it was some kind of prank, but then I looked down and saw... Neil. Okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's all the questions for now. Some prank. Yeah, well, sounds like he was a real cut-up. What's that, goulash? Get it out of here, Ray, for God's sake. What's the matter? Doesn't smell too bad to me. No, it smells too good. Julia's got me on a health food diet. She's got this crazy idea high blood pressure is a bad thing. Sounds like a real nut. I give it three weeks. The diet or Julia? Both. Rogers just dropped off the report on Neil Jensen. Exsanguination. Poor guy bled to death. Well, that would explain all the red stuff. How many cuts are we talking about? Over a dozen, but most of them are superficial. Victim bled out from a deep laceration to the femoral artery. Time of death? 4.17 a.m. Apparently, the guy was still alive when his wife found him, but just barely. Blood trail leads down to the curb, then disappears. Well, at least he got to die at home. When did he get wounded? Around 2. Slow bleeder. Well, we've all got problems. What do we know about the weapon? Switchblade, maybe? Right length, but Roger says it was curved, like a scythe. Our victim was done in by a midget Grim Reaper. Anything we can use to ID the perp? No fingerprints, um... But it appears some of the blood on Jensen's clothes wasn't his own. Our victim got in a few good jabs before he went down, huh? What does the lab have to say? Results aren't back yet. Any minute now. Van Buren. Uh-huh. Really? How do they... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Elliptical and nucleated. Got it. Well, let us know if you find out anything else. That was the lab. Elliptical and nucleated? The red blood cells? Turns out it's not human. It's bird blood. What kind of bird? A dead one, I'm guessing. A victim was stabbed with a pelican. Hold off a minute, Lenny. I got something here. What? The Jensen's nanny. She's waiting to catch a bus, but I don't see it coming yet. Then let's not waste any time. 
Mind if we ask you a few questions? Where were you Wednesday morning at 2 a.m.? In bed. Where else? Here? I only work days. I live in Bedford Stuy. Check with my parents if you don't believe me. Did you know Neil Jensen very well? You mean, were we lovers? Uh, that wasn't where I was going. But since you brought the subject up... No, he, he was my employer, that's all. I liked him, though. We had a lot of good talks. He was interested in stuff, you know? Ideas? He was really interested when he found out I was a Wiccan. He liked to ask questions. Wiccans. Don't they sometimes sacrifice animals? Pigeons? Chickens? No. We in the Wiccan community reveal life in all its forms. God, people have such ignorant ideas. Nice going. Hey, not every hunch pans out. How did Mr. and Mrs. Jensen get along? Did they fight? All married couples fight sometimes, I guess. I don't plan to get married myself. I used to say that, too. Yeah, I said it a bunch. Yeah, it never did me any good. But not everybody fights in front of the nanny. What did Mr. and Mrs. Jensen fight about when they fought? Ah, the usual. Money. I guess he was better at spending it than making it, and new babies cost a lot. He was pretty pissed when she cut off his allowance. Allowance? How old was he, twelve? Hey, don't tell I told you that. I want the nice as it is. Here's my bus. Gotta run. We got all we need out of her. Come on, let's talk to the widow. I'm sorry I wasn't much help to you last night. We quite understand, Mrs. Jensen. You've been through a terrible shock. Please call me Ellie. And I apologize again in advance. I'm going to have to cut this short when Noah wakes up at 3.55. You've got him on a schedule? It's the other way around. Wait and see. You could set your watch by him. Your husband was a writer. Oh, maybe I've read some of his work. I doubt it. I didn't mean that the way it sounds. You don't by any chance subscribe to the Metamodernist Quarterly. So your husband wasn't about to become the next John Grisham. Wasn't that difficult for you? I mean, him not bringing in a regular income? We got by. I believed in my husband's work, detective, and thankfully my income was sufficient to support both of us comfortably. I'm principal at PS84. Do you know where your husband went last night? I have no idea. He left the house around nine, said he'd be back late, and I shouldn't worry. But you did? Of course, but no more than usual. This was par for the course for Neil. When he's working on a new story, he'll go off on research expeditions. Often at strange hours, sometimes for days at a time. And he never talks about it till he has a rough draft on paper. Doesn't want anyone to influence his thought process.
Was your husband missing anything when you found him? Any valuable personal items? His wallet? Was on him. Eight dollars and a MasterCard. His Rolex. No Rolex on the body. I gave it to him on our 10-year anniversary. It's engraved. He always wore it. Your nanny. Adam Marie Velasquez. This may be an indelicate question, but uh, your husband never... Uh... Neil liked to flirt, but he wasn't a cheater. You're sure? I know what goes on in my house. I'm sure of that. And I installed a nanny cam to make extra sure. We heard something about you cutting off your husband's allowance. No. Who told you that, Adam Marie? Uh, we're not at liberty to divulge. <laughs> She's alluding to the fact that I took Neil's name off the savings account last week. I didn't enjoy doing it, but... Yes? When Neil was in research mode, he spent money. Well, recklessly. He'd get so caught up in his work, prudence would go out the window. I used to put up with it, but new babies are expensive. Anything you can tell me about your husband's background? He had a poker problem in college when I first knew him. Junior year, I had to cover his student fees because he gambled away the money his parents gave him. Of course, that was 15 years ago, but I worried maybe he was falling back into old habits. Any idea what Mr. Jensen wasted your money on? God knows. Like I said, he was very closed-mouthed about his research expeditions. Be honest. Any chance it was something illegal? Drugs, gambling, or maybe he was being blackmailed? What's that noise? Our chickens. Henny, Penny, and Maxine. You've never seen chickens in New York? Well, sure, but they usually come with biscuits and a side of mashed potatoes. You're behind the times, officers. Urban farming is the wave of the future. Fosters a connection to the earth. Plus, once you've tasted homegrown eggs, those watery factory-produced things just make you gag. One of the things we're trying to make sense of here, Ellie, is we found avian blood on your husband's clothes. Avian? Bird blood. I know what the word means. It's just very odd. That's what we thought. Maybe your husband slaughtered a chicken for dinner last night? I don't think so. He doesn't take much of an interest in them, to be honest. They're more my thing. He only helps out when it's something I can't bring myself to do. Uh, about those chickens of yours, what do you mean when you say Neil would do the things you couldn't bring yourself to do? Well, raccoons got one once and he cleaned up the mess, but that was ages ago. And I made him get rid of Roger last July. Roger? A cockerel. He started out as Rebecca. See, keeping hens is perfectly legal in New York City, but it's against the law to keep a rooster. Makes sense to me. We raised our brood from chicks. And of course all chicks look alike. They're sexed before they're sold, but the process isn't foolproof. We bought four hens. And one of them turned out to be a rooster. Right. By the time we found out she was a he, I had grown fond of him. I didn't have the heart to get rid of him myself, so I made Neil do it. But like I said, that was practically a year ago. Do you know what he did with it? He took it back to the farm we got it from, in New Jersey. Cora's Cluckers. I can give you their number, they know us there. There goes the alarm. 355. What'd I tell you? Right on schedule.
Nina Haversham, 32, junior partner at McCormick and Preston. Wait a minute. Nina Haversham? She was one of the suspects in the preppy jogger case. So? Van Buren took us off that one. Yeah, but remember that little speech he gave back in February? All detectives are encouraged to ask about crimes they're not currently investigating. It's all about uh, spreading the widest possible net. Well, the case may be closed for now, but the net's still open. Hey, well, happy fishing, partner. Hey, you know that meat market sells cow skulls? Now, I know that definitely isn't on your diet. Look what it says in the logs. Three weeks ago Tuesday, we got a late night complaint about noise coming from the meat market. How late at night? 1.45 a.m. Then, two weeks ago, also on Tuesday, the same noise complaint. Let me guess. Same thing happened last Tuesday. About 15 minutes before Neil Jensen was wounded. What do you think? I think we've got our warrant. All right, then. But at least let me watch. I'm sorry. It's against policy. Okay. Well, we found our bird blood. I'm still not sure what else we're looking for. Anything that'll tell us what was going on after hours Tuesday night, and whether Neil Jensen was in on it. What's that? A ledger. And I got a feeling these ain't sales of ground round in here. They look like bets. <whistles> Looks like NJ owes a bundle to EH. EH. Edward Wang. Think this could be our murder weapon? I don't think so. That's a hell of a lot of blood. Could have come from a pig or something, I guess, but why would you wrap a pig in a blanket? I mean, a real pig in a real blanket. Let's take it back to forensics. You want to search the garbage? Hey, nothing I like better than digging through a mound of chicken heads and feathers. What'd you find? It's the carcass of a whole rooster. It's a big one, too. Why do you suppose they just throw it away? Maybe it died of diphtheria. Nah, it's all cut up. This could do a guy in. Sure, but not our guy. Van Buren said it was a short, curved blade. Hey, look at this! A short, curved blade. What do you want to bet it's a match for the murder weapon? Wonder what it is. Doesn't seem like anything a butcher would use. Wait, let me see that blade again. I know what this is. It's a gaff. They attach these to the claws of... Hey, Mr. Huang! I think you've got some explaining to do. Can it wait? I got a lot of customers right now. We can talk out there if you'd rather. I'm sure they'll be interested to hear about how you're running a cockfighting ring. Ah, cockfighting, of course. Is that, uh, kosher? What do you think, Ray? We got enough to arrest this guy? Yeah, I say we cuff him for the murder of Neil Jensen. Murder? Now wait a minute, detectives. Hold everything. Sure, it all hangs together. Jensen owed a gambling debt to Mr. Huang here, and when Jensen can't pay up, Huang starts eyeing his Rolex. Neil, thanks for ten wonderful years. Ellie. You gotta believe me, I didn't kill him. Then who did? Ricardo Guzman, I think. Where can we find him? 
He doesn't have a fixed address. Moves around from couch to couch. Take this guy in. Wait! I got his cell number. What luck. I'm glad you know how to follow instructions, Mr. Huang, because we've got a little job for you. Okay, Wang, you remember what we told you, and this ought to go down quick and painless. He's gonna kill me, you know, when he finds out I'm working with the police. By that time, he'll be in custody. That is, as long as you play it cool and take your cues from us. Yeah? Ricardo, it's Wang. Hey, what's the matter, man? You sound funny. Cops had me worked up. But they're gone. The cops, they worked me over pretty hard. But you didn't say nothing. No, I held firm. They're gone now. They find anything? Not enough to arrest you. Enough to make them suspicious, but not enough to get you in trouble, I think. So what am I supposed to do, man? We got another fight coming Tuesday. You know I can't cancel it. I'm on the hook to Menendez. Five grand, man, and I'm broke. Hold the fight in a new location. Better not hold the fight at the shop. Too risky. You gotta find a new location. Where, man? I don't know nobody with that kind of space. Tell him you do. I do? My cousin Lou runs a body shop in Park Slope. Let me talk to him. See. Si. You're a pal, man. Now, tell him you'll meet him later. Let's meet up later, once everything's squared away. Where? Somewhere by Pulaski Bridge, 6 p.m. Uh, that street corner. Over by the bodega and the pharmacy. On 21st by Pulaski Bridge. Around 6? See, si. sounds like a plan. See you there. You've done good, Mr. Huang. We'll take it from here. Huang, over here. Sorry, Huang is indisposed at the moment. Ricardo Guzman, you are under arrest for the murder of Neil Jensen. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Mr. Guzman doesn't dispute the cockfighting charges. Uh, we're prepared to plead guilty on that one. Está insultando la República Dominica. Let me. Uh, my client is not a murderer, Mr. McCoy. Mr. Jensen died as a result of an accident. An accident? He attempted to handle an armed bird, and he lost control of it. Really? Unbelievable. A man gets carved up like a side of beef, Guzman lets him slowly bleed to death, then dumps him on a doorstep and expects to walk away. I checked with the Dominican consulate. And? He's wanted there for drug running and armed robbery. Well, I want him here for murder. Is it possible it really was an accident? Does it matter? Neil Jensen didn't have to die. Guzman had two hours to get help and he callously stood by. Murder too. Depraved indifference. Mr. Guzman, when did you first meet Neil Jensen? Maybe uh, a year ago, I guess. Who initiated the relationship? You or him? He did. I didn't want to have no part of him, man. Not at first. What I do, I gotta be careful who I let in. Can bring trouble, you know? Especially a white guy. Mr. Jensen came to you with an offer, is that right? Yeah, he had a bird and uh, he wanted me to help him raise it and fight it. And at first you said no? That's right. Objection! Asked and answered! Sustained. Strike that. 
What convinced you to take Neil Jensen under your wing, as it were, in spite of your suspicions? He knew cockfighting ain't how they make it out to be, you know? It's a more civilized practice than people realize, you mean. Objection, leading. Sustained. Strike that. What sort of sentiments did Mr. Jensen express to you? Well, like, cocking's a real sport. It takes dedication and discipline. And you know, it can teach you a lot about life if you let it. So you agreed to keep the bird and help him raise it? See, si, together we raised El Jefe, and together we conditioned him to fight. He was a good bird. Why don't you tell us, in your own words, what happened on the night of Tuesday, May 5th? Well, Neil come in that night really keyed up, man, like super keyed up. He was jumping all around. I think maybe he was on something. Objection! Speculation! Sustained. Strike that from the record. Watch yourself, Mr. Guzman. Please confine your description to actual events. Go on. Well, he was excited, you know, because El Jefe was finally gonna fight. There were some other birds up first, but he couldn't sit and watch, man, pacing around, pacing around, till his turn finally came. Okay, I tell him. I'm the handler. I'm experienced at this stuff. Let me do it. Get the bird into the ring. The pit, yeah. It could be dangerous, you know, especially with the long heel. A long blade attached to the rooster's spur. Right, but Neil wouldn't hear nothing I was saying, man. Being he was a rider, he had to do everything himself. Well, anyway, he's yelling about how he had to be the one to handle El Jefe. I told him don't. I ordered him even, but he really got in my face about it, man, so I had to back down. Then he went for the rooster, like he was going for a football or something. Grabbed it around the neck. You understand, this is a bird was being conditioned to fight. The bird goes crazy, it... It, it attacked yeah. Neil Jensen. Naturally, you were horrified. Objection, leading. Sustained. How did you feel? Horrified, naturally. I made a grab for the bird and got it. Putting yourself in considerable danger in the process, I imagine. Objection. Leading. Council is putting words in the witness's mouth. Withdrawn. But by the time I got the rooster under control, the damage was done. I see. So what then? What did you do for him? I wrap a blanket around him to try to stop the bleeding, you know. Did you think to take him to the hospital? Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to do, but he told me not to. He wanted me to take him home. Mr. Jensen asked you to take him home? Mm-hmm. His wounds, I mean, he was cut up pretty bad, but not so bad as all that. He should have pulled through, no problem. Objection. No expert knowledge. Considering the outcome, I think we can conclude that Mr. Guzman's assessment of the situation is off. Sustained. Facts only, Mr. Guzman. You swore on the Bible you'd tell the truth, Mr. Guzman. I'm telling the truth. I, I panicked maybe. You would have done the same. But I did what Neil asked me to do. What I thought would save his life. Your witness, Mr. McCoy. Mr. Guzman. The incident in question occurred on the night of May 5th. That's right. Maybe 145. 145. And you say you acted to save him? Of course I acted. I, I tried to help him right there. And when I, when I couldn't help him, I took him home. Like he asked me to.
But there's a problem here. The 911 call is timestamped 403. Two hours after the incident, Mr. Guzman. Under the circumstances, it's fair to ask. Couldn't your response have been a little more prompt? Hijos de puta mentirosos. I'm sorry, Mr. Guzman. It's a mistake. Someone's not telling the truth. Are you suggesting 911 got the time wrong? Or somebody? You knew it was dangerous for Neil Jensen to handle his own rooster. Sure it was dangerous. Uh, when those birds are ready to fight, man, they're ready to fight. Then why didn't you stop him? I, I tried, man, but like I said, he wouldn't take no for an answer. Mr. Guzman, you took Mr. Jensen into your confidence, initiated him into your illegal activities. Knowing your new disciple was a writer, didn't you worry that he'd give the game away, expose your ring, and force you to shut down operations? Well, sure I was worried, but he promised me he'd keep quiet, and he wouldn't write anything neither, unless I okayed it first. And you trusted him? Yeah, he respected me, man. Well, it doesn't seem like he respected you very much on the night he died. I mean, he defied you. He disobeyed your orders to stay away from the rooster. Yeah, I, I guess that's right. Let's get back to those final moments, shall we? Maybe this time we can get the facts straight. You drove Neil Jensen home. Like he asked me to. And you dropped him off at the door. What time was that? Four o'clock? More like two. Did you stay with him till he was safely inside? Mm, no. No. You dumped him there and took off. Why, Mr. Guzman? I heard a baby crying as I was coming up the walk with Neil, and I saw a light turn on, so I knew she was up. I, I was sure she was going to come down and get Neil. Yes? But I didn't want to have to be there and explain it all to her, you know? No, I expect you didn't. No further questions. Want to take this one, Abby? The people call Ellie Jensen to the witness stand. Mrs. Jensen, tell us how you discovered your husband on the night in question. Well, I heard a sort of a thunk coming from outside the front door. Did it wake you up? No. No, it wasn't loud enough for that, but luckily I was awake. Noah, my baby, had just waked me for his usual feeding. That at least conforms to Mr. Guzman's testimony. What condition was your husband in when you found him? He was... It was... Horrible. He was covered in blood, and he had this look in his eyes like... He knew he was dying. I kept saying, who did this to you? Who did this to you? But all he could do was move his mouth. I think he was saying, I'm sorry. And there was nobody with him? Nobody. He was all alone. Now this is crucial. Mrs. Jensen, what time did you discover your husband? Just before 4 a.m. You're absolutely sure? Yes. I glanced at the clock when my baby cried at five minutes, too. He always wakes up at the same time. Thank you, Mrs. Jensen.
So you finally come around, eh, Harlan? If that's the way you want to look at it, Jack. Great. What are you looking for? No jail time. Mr. Guzman pays a fine and does 12 months probation. Come on, he killed a man. Actually, a rooster killed a man. He sat idly by for two hours and let an innocent man bleed to death. So he can go right back to running cockfights? No deal, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Ricardo Guzman will never win any good citizenship awards. He's a devotee of cockfighting, a sport which many, no doubt, many of you here in the jury consider barbaric and inhumane. But it's important to appreciate that the defendant is the product of another culture. We mustn't let cultural differences blind us to his essential humanity. Consider Mr. Guzman's relationship with the deceased. He agreed to act as Mr. Jensen's mentor, not for money, but through mutual love of the sport. For many months, he patiently worked with him and trained with him. He became Mr. Jensen's mentor and his friend. And when the accident occurred, Mr. Guzman reacted as a friend would react, with care and concern. Perhaps he made the wrong decision in taking the injured man home. Perhaps you or I would have gone straight to the hospital. But remember, Mr. Guzman is an immigrant, an outsider, with an outsider's suspicion of big institutions. My client has lost a friend, perhaps as the result of his own mistake. And for that, he will suffer for the rest of his life. But does he deserve to go to jail? Good people of the jury, I beg you. Let's not compound one error with another! Two hours. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Two hours. Two hours between the time Neil Jensen was stabbed, stabbed repeatedly, and the time the accused saw fit to do something about it. Two hours of agony, of Mr. Jensen bleeding, losing strength, crying for help, for mercy. But there was no mercy, not from Ricardo Guzman. The accused knew Neil Jensen well enough to understand the limits of their trust. If the victim had survived the attack, there would have been questions. The story would have come out. Guzman's illegal operation would have been exposed. He would have faced prosecution, or loss of livelihood at the very least. He had a lot to lose, and a lot to gain by doing nothing. The legal community has a phrase for this behavior. Depraved indifference. None of us was in the slaughterhouse with Ricardo Guzman and Neil Jensen. None of us knows exactly what was going on through the mind of the accused as he watched his cohort writhe on the floor. We may never know exactly why he stood and waited and waited. But we aren't being asked to judge Mr. Guzman's motivations. We're being asked to judge his acts, or in this case, his failure to act. And in this case, I think you'll agree. Inaction speaks louder than words. Has the jury come to a verdict? We have, Your Honor. In the charge of murder in the second degree, how do you find? We find the defendant, Ricardo Guzman, guilty. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. He... got what he deserved. Not much comfort to you, I'm sure. It won't bring Neil back, but it gives me some closure. Will you be okay? I think he'll see to it. Right on schedule, as always. Know anyone who needs a nanny? Mrs. Jensen let you go, huh? 
Ah, figures. I'm just one more thing that reminds her of Neil. And God knows she got rid of all his other stuff. His photo albums, his collections of rare books. Well, different people grieve in different ways. Yeah, I think she'll be doing her grieving in Aruba. She bought tickets yesterday. You don't suppose. You've got a suspicious mind, Curtis. Up for a little field trip tonight? Five minutes to two. Right on schedule. You think that means... She couldn't bring herself to get rid of the rooster in the chicken coop, but the rooster in the house is a different story. I'm not sure I understand. She went up on the witness stand and told the court that she found her husband at 4 a.m. But she told us that her baby wakes up at the same times every day, and we heard the baby wake up at 2. So? Isn't it possible that the baby could have also woken her up at 4 a.m.? We're talking about a baby here. You don't have any proof that Ellie Jensen is lying. Which is why we need a warrant to search her brownstone. And just what are you hoping to find? Mrs. Jensen mentioned that she installed a nanny cam in her nursery. Those things have timestamps on them. She might be lying or not, but the nanny cam always tells the truth. Fine, I'll give you a warrant to confiscate the nanny cam, but only that. Neil? Is that you? 2 a.m., Mrs. Jensen. Care to tell us why you waited so long to call 911? I... I wasn't thinking straight. Clearly. I was just... so mad. He promised me he was going to stop running around like a damn teenager, wasting our money and risking his stupid neck, all for the sake of his stories. He was going to calm down and be normal, a decent husband and father. He swore. I didn't want him to die. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. I think he learned. jury just came back in the Jensen case. And? Guilty. Man 2, 10 to 20. Looks like PS84 is going to have to find themselves a new principal. Good work, gentlemen. How about we grab lunch? You still on that diet? Nope. Ditch the health food. And, uh, <laughs> Julia. Right on schedule. And I feel great. Any preferences? Nope, I'm up for anything. Except chicken. For some reason that doesn't appeal to me today.